Uh, I'm a 2009 grantee and Creative Capital kindly gave me some money to write this book called The Sellout, which is uh, more or less finished and uh, with any luck will be published by Penguin next summer. Thanks. Uh, I'm just going to read a little bit. Uh, I don't want to get too much what it's about, but the guy finds himself, it opens in the Supreme Court. He's waiting for the courtroom to fill, and it's his trial in a case called Me versus the United States of America. <laughs> he's been smoking weed, and he's thinking about the, uh, the motto on the outside of the building, which is equal justice under law. And he, he, when he talks about when he was young, he thought that a motto, if, if black America had a motto, it would make things a lot easier. When I was 10, I spent a long night buried under my comforter, cuddled up with Funshine Bear, who filled with a foamy, enigmatic sense of language and bloomy and dogmatism, was the most literary of the Care Bears and my harshest critic. In the musty darkness of that rayon bat cave, his stubby, all but immobile yellow arm struggled to hold the flashlight steady as together we tried to save the black race in eight words or less. Putting my homeschool Latin to good use, I'd crank out a motto, then shove it under his heart-shaped plastic nose for approval. My first effort, Black America, Vini, Vidi, Vici, fried chicken, pe <laughs> peeled back Funshine's ears and closed his hard plastic eyes in disappointment. Semper Fi, Semper Funky, raised his polyester hackles, and when he began to paw the mattress in anger and reared up his stubby yellow legs, bearing his ursine fangs and claws, I tried to remember what the Cub Scout manual said to do when confronted by an angry stuffed cartoon bear, drunk on stolen credenza wine and editorial power. If you meet an angry bear, remain calm, speak in gentle tones, stand your ground, get large, and write in clear, simple, uplifting Latin senses. My pronunciation is terrible, so you have to forgive me. Unum corpus, unum mens, una cor, unum amor. One body, one mind, one heart, one love. Not bad, it had a nice license plate ring to it. I could see it in cursive circumnavigating the rim of a race war medal of honor. Funshine didn't hate it, but from the way he wrinkled his nose right before falling asleep that night, I could tell he felt my slogan implied a certain groupthink, and weren't black people always complaining about being labeled as monolithic. I didn't ruin his dreams by telling him that black people do all think alike. They won't admit it, but every black person thinks that they're better than every other black person. I never heard back from the NAACP or the Urban League, so the black credo exists only in my head, impatiently waiting on a movement, a nation, and I suppose since nowadays branding is everything, a logo. Maybe we don't need a motto. How many times have I heard someone say, nigga, you know me, my motto is, and if I were smart, I'd put my Latin to use, charge $10 a word, 15 if they aren't from the neighborhood or want me to translate, don't hate the player or hate the game. If it's true that one's body is one's temple, I could make good money, open up a little shop on the boulevard and have a long line of tattooed customers who've transformed themselves into non-denominational places of worship, onks and kofas and crucifixes, fighting for abdominal space with Aztec sun gods and one star, star David galaxies. Chinese characters running down shave calves and spinal columns. Sinological shout outs to dead loved ones that they think means rest in peace, Grandma Beverly, but in reality reads, no tiki, no bilateral trade agreement. Man, it'd be a gold mine. High as the price of cigarettes, they'd come at all hours of the night. I could sit behind a thick plexiglass window and have one of those sliding metal drop boxes that gas station attendants use. I slide out the drawer and like prisoners passing jailhouse kites, my clientele would surreptitiously hand me their affirmations. The harder the man, the neater the handwriting. The more soft-hearted the woman, the more pugnacious the phrase. You know me, they say, my motto is, and drop cash and quotations from Shakespeare and Scarface, biblical passages, schoolyard aphorisms, hoodlum, hoodlum truisms written in every medium from blood to eyeliner into the drawer. And whether it was written on a crumpled up bar napkin, paper plate stained with barbecue sauce and potato salad, or it was a page carefully torn from a secret diary kept since a stir in juvenile hall that if I tell anyone about will be my ass, ya stuvo, whatever that means. I take the job seriously, for these are a people for whom the phrase, well, if you put a gun to my head, isn't theoretical. 
and when someone has pressed a cold metal muzzle to the yin and yang symbol tattooed on your temple or stomped a shit kicker boot heel into the one inked on your coccyx bone like a black and white Chinese balloon attached to an ass crack string and you've lived to tell about it, you have to respect one's belief in duality, the cosmic balance of the universe and the power of the tramp stamp. If your world is such that when any time you want something, the only thing you feel you can do is throw your weight around, your weight and fists around, because all you have for currency is your tattooed obesity, and deep down inside you know that even if you could afford free speech, no one would listen to you. Thank you.